Hello, I'm Dr. Adriana Potter. On Benefit Yourself series today, we're going to talk about what to expect for post prostatectomy, which is regarding uh, a male that had a prostate being removed uh, due to enlarged prostate or a cancer or any other issue with the pelvic area that needed to have an excision of the prostate. Um, we're going to cover about what to expect after your surgery and also uh, the process of recovering and when to start resuming some of your normal activities. Just like in any surgery, you're going to be having some pain and discomfort early on. Uh, most of the surgery nowadays for the post prostatectomy are done robotic, and which means the nerves are usually spare. But that doesn't mean that they are not going to be upset and somewhat um, having some micro lesions that will affect the ability to engage your pelvic floor muscles. With proper healing and, rec and resting, those activities of the nerve should resume its normal function. Okay. Um, the most important thing is to rest in the first week and make sure that you are limiting your activity and allowing your body to recover from that initial procedure. Um, you may have some issues with urinary leakage and, and you're probably going to have to use some pads early on the, in that recovery. After a few weeks, probably your physician will recommend you to do a pelvic floor therapy to assist you in recovery. The nice thing about the recovery from prost prostatectomy is that most of the issues resolve on its own, but going to a pelvic floor physical therapy will help you to resolve sooner and learn how to re-engage those muscles that perhaps are not having the same ability since the surgery. Okay. Um, bearing down and lifting anything that involves a physical effort is something that is a concern because that can strain too much the surgical area as well as the pelvic and results in more leakage. So in physical therapy, we go over the ability to engage your abdominal muscles and doing a pelvic bracing as well as doing an isolated pelvic floor muscle contraction, which in nowadays is described as the Kegel, um, and functionally using those muscles to be able to control the urine loss. As you keep going with your ability to engage those muscles, you will also uh, have less uh, urinary leakage. So during the sessions with a pelvic floor, we're going to go into specifics of each patient and how their situation are um, unique and then apply specific recommendations based on the patient needs. Constipation is a big thing about it as well. So you want to make sure you're avoiding constipation because if you're having to bear down too hard, that's going to create an issue with the surgical area and impair the healing. Uh, usually the physicians have you on the regimen for a stool softener. And if you haven't had it received that, it is a recommendation that I, I usually do to my patients, any patients that have uh, constipation. Um, which is using Miralax or um, other um, like stool softeners, pills, anything that you can help you to maintain that softness into the stool. So usually the anesthesia and the pain medication, those things will create a little constipation and having those stool aids can help you to maintain the stool soft and easier to pass. Um, we don't recommend doing laxatives because that kind of makes to running and hard to control. So just soften the stool and that should be enough because they will not disturb your microbiome and your guts. And it's just um, drawing a little bit more water to your stool to make it softer. Also here at this YouTube channel, you have two amazing resources for you that will help you a little bit further if you're looking for more information on constipation, as well information about how to recover and gaining control over your bladder. So please check it out the videos. Uh, one is Let's Talk About Poop video, and the second one is Mind Over Bladder video that will help you to increase the control over your uh, bowel and bladder. When you're coughing and sneezing, you can always do a little bracing of your abdominal area, which is pulling here and <coughs> versus pulling out like <coughs> so you want to make sure that your muscles kind of tucked in a little bit to uh, preserve a little bit of that uh, mechanical assistance 
to um, not bulge. If you bulge in your abs, you actually bulge in your pelvic area, which can strain the surgical area. So we go over usually those things in the session and assist the patients that are having difficulty with that pelvic bracing and also palpating the area and make sure that you're having an ability to engage those pelvic floor muscles. Another thing that we usually go over is about lifting. Usually there is a lifting restriction on the post prostatectomy surgery. Um, some physicians are more conservative, nothing more than five pounds. Some may say about 10 pounds. Um, but any time that you're lifting, it should be something that you can lightly pick it up with a hand. If you're needing two hands to do it, and, and that will be a little bit more of the straining. So early in that surgery, you want to avoid the lifting so there's no straining anywhere in your body and most likely down your pelvic area where the surgery was done. Um, so a gallon of milk is probably safe, a little light bag of grocery, but not in the first week. You want to do that about the second week and forward. Uh, light walking in the first week is recommended, so you make sure that you stay active. Um, just inside of the house for the first week is mostly rest. And then after the second week, you can start doing some light walking, like one or two blocks, um, a little bit every day, and, and then gradually increasing your activity level and walking a little bit more over time. Anytime you're walking, you want to make sure that you are um, engaging your abdominal muscles so you can have a nice, good support of the abdominal. Uh, area so you maintain a good control of the pressure so you're not having leakage when you're having those activities so you want to make sure that um, anything you're practicing and you're resuming activities you're being successful and we address the success in this situation not having leakage with activity okay also in the first session we uh, not only assess the pelvic floor and the ability to do an isolated contraction and in the pelvic bracing, what we also may do a facilitated pelvic floor muscle exercise, which has to do with a, a little bit of resistance into your hips, um, using a ball for your squeezing on the balls or spreading to the band, and that can help you to facilitate your pelvic floor muscles on the lower level. Another question that comes in into the sessions is that when can I start having uh, sex with my partner? Um, some physicians will give you specific directions, one that can be resumed. In general, it's about four to six weeks. And of course, um, as we know, that with the excision of the prostate, the blood vessels and the nerves, they are, well, the blood vessels are changed a little bit because it goes through that prostate and they are, um, they will reorganize with the surgery and everything else. They will kind of heal at it again. So the nerves, the nerves may have a little compression to it, that um, even though it was spared, doesn't mean that the nerve did not get upset. And after the surgery, there's quite a lot of swelling and that swelling creates more compression into the nerve. So in terms of um, how does that affect sex, a lot because not only you having issues with having an erection, the erection also may be a little bit more flaccid. Some physicians have a specific protocol in using some um, Viagra Cialis and they have a specific um, doses in, in order how to do it and your physician will address that with you specifically. Um, I also have heard that some of them may using after I think about six to eight weeks um, or maybe sooner, it all depends, your physician will discuss that with you to use a, a vacuum pump. So the use of the uh, Viagra or Cialis or any other um, medication that helps with erection is that that draws more blood to the penis and, and the use of the vacuum also draws more blood to the penis. Um, what the research have shown that when you don't do that um, and early on before they started with those, that, that protocol of doing uh, Viagra and Cialis in, in the pump is that um, there was a, a change in the girth and the length of the penis and also the vascularization of the penis is compromised so the muscles uh, get a little bit atrophy around the, the, the genitals. With that impact the ability to have a proper erection. So when you're using the medication in the vacuum and pelvic floor exercise muscles, that will help you to uh, maintain to the maximum ability of keeping the muscles in, in good state and the blood supply in good state, which is very important for erection. 
um, your physician will discuss with you the regimen for those medications and the pump and the pelvic floor um, uh, is going to be done with the pelvic floor physiotherapist. Um, sometimes we will recommend that you do a electrical stimulation which can be done on the surface of the uh, center tendineum which is right underneath the scrotum or a rectal probe which can facilitate those pelvic floor muscles. If you're having issues with engaging them voluntarily, the electrical stem can help you to do uh, more of the recruitment of the muscles and increase the ability to contract them, which will improve the blood flow. The research has shown that um, doing pelvic floor muscle exercises either voluntarily and or with electrical stimulation increases the blood flow to the penile area as well helping with improving um, erection, uh, hardness and sexual satisfaction for the patient itself as well as the partner. So the research is in there to support the use of pelvic floor um, exercises to help you, you to maintain a good sexual function on the prostatectomy patients. And also, what, one of the things that I do specifically in the clinic um, we, to help patients with erectile dysfunction that already have seen a urologist and have eliminated the, um, the prostate issues or having have had already a prostatectomy, um, we go over you know, assessing the ability to engage those muscles, engage the abdominal muscles, as well as improving the cardiovascular function. So if you have diabetes or blood pressure issue, those are vascular issues that, um, that will impair your cardiovascular system and your circulatory system will be impaired if you're having those issues. So you wanna make sure that you're also doing a nice cardiovascular exercise and we go over it in kind of customizing your uh, exercises in our clinic to make sure that you're improving the blood flow everywhere, including your genitals, which will help you with erection and sexual satisfaction. Alrighty, so that's the, one of the things. Um, I also, in my clinic, we partner up with acupuncturists, so we can do some acupuncture session as well to improve some of those points that can help with the blood flow to the penile area. As you continue to um, progress with your recovery about six weeks or so, that's when um, the exercises can become a little bit more intense and you can start resuming your regular activity and physical exertion. Um, that way you can improve your vascular system. So that's only uh, the restrictions are on. It's more like light exercises, including what we do in the clinic. And we move on to more stabilization and then you move to more you know, a, a fitness exercises and then you go into more vigorous. So that is a, that, that's a progression that happens anything between two to two weeks post prostatectomy and it can go over as much as eight weeks. On the program that we do in the clinic um, and for the patients that wants to improve their maximum ability uh, cardiovascularly as well as with the sexual function in bladder control, it is a six weeks program, 12 sessions and we do um, half an hour of a treatment and half an hour of cardiovascular twice a week. That way your body, it kind of optimizes um, you in a conservative way to uh, have a better sexual function not, and also well, a fitness level. Hopefully you are a little bit more familiar with what to expect after your post prostatectomy or also what you expect when you come in for a pelvic floor evaluation. This way the, the males can, can get a little bit more of the help and, and, and improve their ability to resume their exercise and, and, and sexual life. I'm Dr. Adriana Potter on the Benefit Yourself series today. We cover what you expect on your post prostatectomy surgery, as well as the function of the pelvic floor muscles and the ability to recover from the surgery or improve your currently uh, vascular levels on your genitals to help you with better erections and preventing erectile dysfunction on a conservative way. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button. And, and if you have any questions, you can post in the comments. I will gladly answer them to you. Have a great day.